Good morning and welcome. I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, I'm Presbyterian Minister of three congregations in Eastern Ontario. And thank you for joining me for this time of worship, this time with God and a short message. So prepare yourself to encounter God in our worship. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalmist writes, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his bounties. Come, let us enter into the presence of the Lord. Come, let us praise and bless his holy name. Let us pray. I'm going to pause now to share screen and you can join in with the prayer then. So let us pray. God, Father, we stand here needing your healing presence. Enter into our lives, take root in our hearts, give us courage and strength and joy. And as we quiet our hearts this morning, make us ready to receive your grace and power, empower us to proclaim your good news everywhere. At the same time, Lord, we have to confess something we wish we didn't have to confess, the many ways in which we have failed you, failed to be your faithful disciples. We have turned our backs on those in need too often. We have sought after power and riches, believing them to be the way to true happiness. We've done so many things that you know are wrong, and we didn't even protest them. You know us far too well. Forgive us. Forgive us when we have failed to love and treat others with compassion. Please, Lord, turn our hearts back to you. Help us to grow into the people you call us to be. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here now, an assurance of pardon. This is the good news. God is faithful and just. He cherishes us as we are. He seeks restoration and healing for all the broken places in our lives. And he forgives us unconditionally. Accept the good news. Believe the good news. Accept God's forgiveness. Amen. I had two hymns picked to go with our service today and the sound quality isn't right. I'm going to have to uh, find a way to, to, um, to fix that and that'll be experimenting. So no hymns, I will put them in on the Facebook. I'll add them in. Uh, if, if you know, the first one would have been, this is our father's world. I'm going to share screen again for our scripture lessons. Our first is a responsive psalm, Psalm 86, verses 11 to 17. So what that means is I read one verse and you read one verse. So I will start and I'll be very clear. This is me reading. And then I'll read the responsive ones too, but I'll be softer and you can just join in. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. 
Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your servant girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and evermore, shall be, world without end. Amen. Our gospel lesson is one of the parables that Jesus told, and this is Matthew 13, verses 24 to 30. Uh, there is an interpretation later on in the, in the chapter, but I'm, we're not going to read it today. So here it is. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the seeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? And he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we ask that you open your word to us. Open our ears that we might understand what we need to hear. Open our mouths that all we say may be worthy of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The sermon title for today's sermon is, What Happened to Judgment? Oh. If you're like me, your summer has been pretty well wrapped up with the pandemic, COVID-19. And then we've been hearing about Black Lives Matter and some of you have been responding with, yes, but all lives matter. And of course we remember indigenous lives matter too. But for many of us, it really just boils down to something simple. If you're guilty of something, you should be punished. If you're not guilty, if you're innocent, you have nothing to be afraid of. If only life were that simple and straightforward. Our gospel passage today is a parable about the kingdom of God. But within that parable is another question, is a story, is an answer to a question, one of the most important questions that we can ask. Why does evil exist in the world? Why do bad things happen? Are some people just plain bad? And if God exists and God is good, why doesn't he do something about it? Think about those questions and then we'll take a closer look at Jesus's parable. Jesus starts off with an analogy that most of us can understand. A farmer plants wheat, seeds. Someone else comes in at night and plants weeds. Now I'm not a gardener as anyone who's seen my garden can attest to that fact. But you know as well as I do that if we plant some seeds and just leave it at that, Pretty soon we're gonna have the plants that we planted and we're gonna have a crop of weeds. If you wanna be sure, check out my children's story. You'll see the pictures. If you want your garden to look nice, you have to work at it. You water the plants, fertilize the ground, and pull up the plants you don't want, the weeds. If we're talking about good and evil in the world, it would be nice if it were that simple. You have good people, you have bad people. Help the good people get rid of the bad people. That's absolutely why we have prisons. It's not to rehabilitate anyone. It's to just get rid of the bad people. Put them away so they don't affect us. 
get rid of them so they don't influence us. And secretly, many of us wish we could just kill them, get rid of them, help God along by getting rid of the, the bad weeds. There's just a problem, one or two problems along the way. The main one is who decides who's good and who's bad. Ouch. There's another problem. If good people are those who keep the law and bad people are those who break the law, where do we find ourselves? I don't know about you, but I'm sure I've been guilty of um, <clears throat> speeding along the highway, going over the speed limit. That's breaking the law. And I'm also sure that I have borrowed a pen from someone and forgotten to return it when I left. That's stealing. Does that make me a bad person? Should I be one of those that's locked up and the key thrown away? It's not so easy to tell who's good and who's bad. As religious people, we sometimes work around that by saying, well, there's a difference between the state's laws, and remember speeding, setting speeding limits is the state's responsibility or the province's responsibility, and God's laws. Okay? So then we'll say those who keep God's laws are good and those who break God's laws are bad. Maybe. I'm not sure it's quite that simple. In Jesus's day, they sort of defined it in terms of purity. And you had three types of people. I may be simplifying a bit. But you had those who were devoted to God who kept all of God's laws or tried to keep all of God's laws and who went sometimes above and beyond just to show their devotion. So the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the temple priests, these were the people who were somehow special, good people. And they had the right to go into a temple, the temple and worship. And then you had the people who actively rejected God's laws. Maybe they, they just refused to keep them. Maybe they were foreigners, followed other religions. Maybe they were um, people who were sick. And so they couldn't keep all of them. Those were the bad people. And they weren't allowed, some of them weren't even allowed on the temple grounds, let alone in the temple. And then you had the majority the people, everyday people, who tried to keep God's laws, did lived good lives, but they had other priorities. Their priorities, raising families, children, getting food to eat, paying taxes, working. And they were sort of good people, but not really good as far as the Pharisees were concerned. And they had the right to come to the temple to make sacrifices, to enter temple grounds, but not to go into the temple itself. And so you have this, okay, the bad people you can kick out, the good people you can let in, and there's that vast majority that somehow fall in the middle. What do you do with them? Good question. But at this point, let's go back to the parable. What is Jesus saying there? Because he doesn't talk about that third group. He says, you've got the wheat and you've got the weeds. He doesn't say there is something in between. He's, and at this point, the parable go, differs from what you do with your own garden. Your own garden, you would take out the weeds. But Jesus says, no, this place, you don't take out the weeds. Let them grow. Why? because you might pull out some wheat by accident. Who knows who's good and who's bad? We don't, God does. So consider the following. Someone fills up gas in a gas station and then takes off. They don't pay. They're a thief, a 
Are they a good person or a bad person? You might wonder, it might seem very simple. What if um, they were teens and they had borrowed the parents' car and gone for a drive somewhere or doing some crazy things and they wanted to fill up the car when they and take it back home so their parents wouldn't know that they'd borrowed it. Are they good or bad? It's not so easy. These are teenagers. They may not be, hmm. or maybe you think, yeah, they should get the book thrown at them. What if it's men and he's rushing his wife to the hospital and realize his car is on empty? So he fills up because he needs to get her to the hospital. She goes moaning or something happens. He just takes off. He's not thinking. He's thinking about her. Is that the same category? Is he good or is he bad? A lot of times we don't know the person. We don't know if they're a good person or a bad person, if they've just made a mistake or if that's the way they normally do things. We don't know the context of, of where, you know, what did that situation, what was the situation that led to the crime? That's why we have trials. We're trying to get that story. We're trying to learn what kind of person this is, what motivated them to do something. We're trying to get that information that often we don't get. We're not God. So we don't know who's really bad. And we think, okay, do we know who's really good? If someone keeps God's laws, does that make them a good person? What if they're keeping God's laws because they're afraid of the consequences? Or they're keeping God's laws because they love God and want to please him? Is that the same kind of goodness? Are they the, sort of equal? We're limited by what we don't know. And this parable where Jesus says, has the farmer saying, don't pull up the weeds. You might pick up some wheat by accident is in a sense saying, don't judge. For us to judge whether someone is good or bad based on whether they keep or break God's laws is dangerous. We aren't God. We don't have all the, the wisdom or the knowledge that's needed to decide whether someone is good or bad. We can decide whether they need to be punished or not, but we can't decide whether they're a good or a bad person. But there's another, there's another possibility. Something that's really not in the parable, but we know it in our lives. And that's maybe we'll think something is wheat, is a weed when it's not. Maybe it's just a deformed wheat. There's that possibility, a transformation. Years ago, I was involved in Jewish Christian dialogue and we spent a year getting to know each other and learning about each other's religions. And then in, towards the end, we started talking about the Holocaust. And I remember this one woman, and she was very sorry that Hitler had committed suicide. And I'm thinking, a Jew who is sorry Hitler committed suicide? Oh, maybe it's because she wanted him to be arrested and tried and then punished, you know, get something that's appropriate, somehow trying to beat into his head that what he did was wrong. No. What she said was she was sorry he committed suicide because he cheated himself of the possibility of repentance, the possibility of recognizing he had done wrong and wanted to make up for it. Wow. Wow. Leave judgment in God's hands. We don't know what's possible. We don't know why someone does good things or bad things. And we don't know if someone who's bad can ever be transformed, 
can never turn their life around to doing something good. Leave it in God's hands. Remember, if we're defining who's good and who's bad by people who keep God's laws or don't keep God's laws, then there's only one answer. We're bad people. All of us. That's part of the gospel. That we have all sinned, have all broken God's laws, have all fallen astray. None of us is good. None of us is worthy of heaven on our own. But then, where's the good news? The good news is that God loves us so much that he was willing to die for us, to reach us in some way. And that God's love can cover a multitude of sins, a whole lot of sins. If we get into heaven, it's not because we're good people. It's because God invites us into heaven. But we're left with that question of why is there evil in the world? There's evil in the world because we can't always tell the difference between good and evil. We can't always tell the difference. We don't always know what can reach someone and transform them from one path to the next. Someone who's good becoming evil or bitter. Someone who's hurt and bad becoming good. But there is the promise in the parable. One day there will be a harvest. One day there will be a separation. These are the wheat. These are the weeds. The weeds be thrown away, burned. The wheat will be taken into the barn. We will be invited into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because God lets us in, invites us in. There is the promise of heaven. And it's something for us to hold on to. The promise of heaven and what heaven is. It's something that's hard to describe and sometimes it's hard for us to even imagine it. We see all the problems in the world and they just sort of overwhelm us. But if we stop to think of what heaven is, a place where those problems don't exist, a world or a place where love is stronger than hate, where despair gives way to hope, where darkness can give way to light, where there is no, where we can enjoy peace. There's no war, there's no crime, there's no illness. We can just enjoy the goodness of life. That's heaven. And it's ours, not because we deserve it, but because God invites us into it. So something to think about on a Sunday morning. Amen. This would be a place for another hymn. And I had one picked up, All Good Gifts. And again, I'll put the link in the uh, Facebook page. Um, I might also put it into the description on YouTube. But um, the sound went, went completely on me. All the churches are suffering at this time because of church building closures. Um, people are, are not coming to church or even sometimes even virtually. And um, so it's a good time to remind you to, to support your own congregation with your offerings. And so let's pray for them. Oh Lord, we bring our gifts to you. Here is the labor of our hands. Here is the love of our hearts. Accept them and us. Use them and us in the building of your kingdom on earth as in heaven. Through Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. Homework time.
Okay, as I do every week, uh, I want you to, to uh, thank God for five things, you know, family, friends, health, whatever it is. Then ask God to look after or protect or, or deliver in some way five people or groups of people or even the country. Uh, I've been praying for the soul of America, and I invite you to pray for that too. And if we're Canadians, us can pray for the soul of Canada too, but I somehow don't feel the same threat as I do for the States. In the Presbytery cycle of prayer, please pray for St. James, St. Andrews, and Gravel Hill. And yes, that's one of my congregations, but please pray for it. And after you finish that, add your own petitions, and then say, in Jesus' name, amen. And do that every day for one week. Now, let's prepare to leave this time of worship. Go into God's world with confidence and hope. Go knowing that God is with you in all that you do. And be one of those people who plant seed of comfort and hope. God will bring about the harvest in his time. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me for this time with God, with God's word. And it's Reverend Cheryl saying goodbye. May the rest of your day be just as blessed. And until next week, take care and keep safe.